I went to Bamiyan, Afghanistan four weeks ago and it has taken me this long to edit and release this video because of a horrible event that really takes a heavy heart to explain. Just two weeks ago, there were two massive bomb blasts that hit the main marketplace in Bamiyan, leaving 14 people dead and over 50 people wounded. In all honesty, I left my heart in Bamiyan because it's a place that I enjoyed so much and it has been really hard for me to know how to react to the situation. Just two weeks before the bombs hit, I was walking in that exact same marketplace. I was eating street food from the vendors and chatting with the most friendly locals who welcomed me with big smiles. Almost all of the city shots that you are about to see in this video are now in ruins and I am just devastated. Since the latest attack in Bamiyan in 2001, the town and province has been recognized as the safest place in Afghanistan, so I've decided to proceed in telling the Bamiyan story in the original way that I experienced it with the hopes that life will carry on and continue to thrive in one of the most beautiful places in the world. I really hope you guys will watch this video to the end because I have a lot of things to say about Bamiyan. I really had an amazing time there when I went. And with that all being said, let's begin the video. I want all of you guys to stop what you're doing right now and join me in appreciating this outstanding nature here in the Bamiyan province of central Afghanistan. <laughs> Thank you. That was really good. Everywhere in Bamiyan, you have incredible views, mountains, valleys. The trees are changing colors right now, which is extra special. And man, what a paradise land. What a hidden treasure of the world, really. Bamiyan, Afghanistan. Oh my God. This place is just about as good as it gets. Just arrived here in Bamiyan at the airport and it's freezing outside, it's like zero Celsius. 32 Fahrenheit, literally freezing. Salam alaikum. How are you, man? Ah, I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. How was the flight? It was nice. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. You're so well, welcome. Roughly 240 kilometers northwest of Kabul is a mountainous region about 2,800 meters high in elevation and it was first settled around 3000 BC. <laughs> the first thing that I like in Bamiyan is security in, a, in, a, in all over the Afghanistan. Bamiyan is a secure place for us. From a global standpoint, Bamiyan is most well known for its massive 4th century Buddha statues that were literally carved into the side of a mountain. This marked the world's westernmost expansion of Buddhism and it was a crucial hub for trade during much of the first and second millenniums. Noor and I are now walking next to the incredible mountain that had the Buddhas carved into the mountain uh, from 4th century. The small Buddha, it's 36 meters. The big one, Sal Sal, it's uh, 55 meters. These Buddha statues are basically like 1600 years old. Yes. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. Like nobody thinks that Buddhism came to Afghanistan. Yeah. You know that? They think about China, Tibet, or maybe even like into Thailand and Cambodia. Yeah. That's like Buddhism, but yeah. Afghanistan? Afghanistan <laughs> used to be the center of the Buddhism one day. Like in here they used to teach buddhism out here like wow lots of important people used to come here to meditate in bamiyan and pray here in bamiyan sadly the buddha statues were destroyed by the taliban in 2001 and since then have never been replaced so in here are pieces of the buddhas they've been kept here by unesco whoa one of the buddhist temples it looks and feels like a stupa like you'd see in other buddhist parts of the world Stairs are steep, <laughs> really steep. Wow, wow, cool. So this is Bamiyan. Yeah, 
We are like almost at the top of the Buddha here. Um, can you imagine, Drew, one day all of this area, the ceiling, the sides, all of this area was nicely painted in blue and different other colors with Buddha meditating and of this, uh, their, their followers coming and praying with him. Even during the recent years before the explosion, the pictures were here. And as soon as the explosion happened, all of those plasters and pictures fold down, down there and smashed out. So we're standing up here, kind of in the opening way of the second largest Buddha. There's a picture of the original Buddha, and that's where he stood, right here. We're now standing above the head of where the Buddha used to stand. And guys, let me tell you something, we are high up here. <laughs> Like, how did they build this that long ago? Uh, in the very uh, early days, they had the type of uh, scaffolds, by scaffolds. They yeah. used to climb and climb and work and work and work. It was like three generations took that this Buddha was completed, yeah. almost a whole century. So the guy who started the Buddha, he never saw this finished. Wow. Yeah. And we are way up here. It, it, it's incredible how they were able to build it so high so long ago. While these Buddha carvings are one of the single coolest things I've ever seen in my entire life, I came to discover that Bamyan is a lot more than that. Just across the valley is an ancient citadel on top of a mountain that carries a fascinating history. That place looks stunning. It's a 12th century citadel that is like partially in ruins, partially still standing, and it's a UNESCO site, and it just looks spectacular. I mean, look at this place. Have you ever seen anything in the world that looks like this? Surely I have not. We are here at the uh, City of Screams. Uh -huh. It's a very old citadel that was destroyed by Genghis Khan during the 12th century. Why is it called the City of Screams? Uh, during the 12th century, when Genghis Khan attacked this area, he faced two a very strong people who fought against the Genghis Khan severely and during this clash his uh, grandson was injured by a spear and then he was died and then the Genghis Khan went crazy and said okay like smash this wall smash this city whatever you found killed him every single living thing was killed really? at this attack yeah so all the destruction that we see left today is from Genghis Khan yeah his empire yeah back 800 years ago yes so let's go walk around and, and walk up to the top of that watchtower. Yeah, sure. Pretty cool to walk around here. Feels extremely old, like... I'm actually pretty impressed how they built this so long ago, you know? These are part of the original walls. Those are renewed, uh, like restored. This is the original? Let's go. This is the original walls. Wow. But it used to be bricks. Look at this. Yeah. How many years of history are coming off these walls? There's a lot of different rooms to walk in. Now that is a washtower. Oh man. You can really see the whole valley here. So there are several washing towers everywhere in the valley. But this is the main washing tower to protect the city. This elevation is no joke, man. When you walk uphill, you're breathing heavy. Wandering around here is like a maze. <sighs> Don't even know which way to go in here. It's like amazingly, if you drive another half hour deeper into the valley, you'll come across another citadel that is just as impressive in its own way. All right, Noor, so where are we now, my friend? Yeah, Drew, welcome to Zohak City or the Red City. In Arizona, there's this place called Sedona, which is all these red rocks. And yeah. this really looks like that. It's like yeah. these red mountains. People still believe that the color, the red color, comes from lots of bloodshed during the the course of the history and empires fighting here. And as what year see. was the citadel made? Uh, 12th century. I just stepped in dog <laughs> as I said that. <laughs> Not dog <laughs> horse Oh, it's cow dung. Cow Yeah. Oh. It's a cow dung. Cow dung. Damn it. Wow, man, this is so cool. This place is just awesome. It's like super red rocks. And then all of a sudden you're walking up and you see this like old settlement, citadel thing. Wow. That's the main entrance to the city out there. 
of Holy these, smokes! All of these uh, sites and stuff that you see out there, they're the watching towers. They used to uh, watch from those little holes to make sure the city is safe. I'm thinking we fly the drone from here. We can look like kings up here. Yeah, let's do it from here. All of these historical sites are just incredible, but what really captured my heart was the people and culture of Bamiyan. The main town of 100,000 residents is filled with colorful markets, a variety of street food, and a different face smiling at you from every direction. And just when I thought I couldn't discover anything more spectacular in Bamiyan, I found people living in cave homes. Okay, we have now found this uh, little village here where the homes are caves in the mountain, literally. I've never seen anything that looks like this before. All of them are man-made, Drew. They're man-made? All of them are man-made. These caves are from hundreds of years ago. This is so cool, we're just walking through these literally cave homes. I've never seen actual cave homes before. This one is probably uh, a house where they keep their animals inside. Oh, it smells like horses. Wow. <laughs> this is cool. Oh man. Welcome to African cave houses, Drew. Cave home. Always the living room looks the same in every house in this country. <sighs> That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Tisha Kurd. By now, you may have noticed the faces of the people in Bamiyan, which closely resemble those from Mongolia or East Asia, and that's because 95% of the population here are Hazara, which is the third largest ethnic group in Afghanistan. Sadly, they are the ones who have been targeted the most throughout history, especially from the Taliban over the last 25 years. We, the Hazara people, have suffered a lot during the course of the history in this country, especially like we had a king during the 17th century who uh, didn't really like Hazaras and he executed like 62% of Hazar people in the central Afghanistan and then things became much better for Hazar people until uh, we had this Taliban popped out in 1994 and 1995. I remember the, the governor of Taliban shout out loud behind the mic when they captured Mazar Sharif Uzbeks should go to Uzbekistan, Tajiks should go to Tajikistan land, and, and Hazara people should go to the cemetery. I mean, they should all dead and then they, they should go to hell. That's, that's what they meant. But through all this suffering, the Hazara people are strong and resilient and they have found a safe haven in Bamiyan. As Noor told me, this has been the most stable region in the country for the last 20 years and it's the only place that I don't have to be looking over my shoulder or worrying about filming in public. Bamiyan is also a place where women have the most rights and freedoms in Afghanistan. Pretty much everywhere else in the country, you'll find a society that is extremely dominated by men and the women are seen covering their bodies from head to toe and they are hardly driving cars or eating out in restaurants. But here in Bamiyan, it's a different story. Women are proudly showing their faces, showing their skin, and are more equally accepted in society. Uh, in the past, when we were cycling or we were skiing, men mostly, they were telling to us that why you're cycling, that is bad for a girl to ride a bike. When was that? Maybe around five years ago. Uh, but now, the situation is much better and the people now understood that uh, women can do everything that they want and uh, they are much stronger than they think. And uh, now, uh, when we are cycling or skiing, now men, women, all the people encourage us. How does that make you feel? This makes me really happy and really, really positive. Why do you think the women have more rights here? What's the reason for that? Because the schools are all, all has been always open to the women and they have the chance to study all the time. And 
men are more educated here, so they respect the laws and regulations. And Bamiyan is what well, it was always peaceful. My trip around Bamiyan has just been incredible and almost life-changing and I didn't think it could get any better but nor was saving the best part for last. Hello. Hello. His family and I drove one hour away to a national park called Bandi Amir and little did I know the magical wonders that I was about to discover. Holy crap, do you guys see how blue that lake is? <laughs> well, this has to be one of the most beautiful places in Afghanistan. It is, and lots of people from around Afghanistan, thousands of people weekly come here to see Bandemir. So in this part of the world, the donkey is used to transport goods really often, and they're really convenient. And as you can see in front of me, we got donkeys who are carrying heavy loads of something. Salam. Hello. Hello, how are, how are you? you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you. What about you? I'm fine, thank you. Oh. You speak English? Oh, yeah. So you got one lake, two lakes, three lakes, four lakes. All four lakes are visible from up here. Amazing, Noor. This is a really cool spot. Thank you so much for coming here, Drew. Of course, man. So proud of that. I really got no words to describe this place. I mean, first of all, we're the only ones here. Like, the only ones here. We got all of this nature to ourselves. Second of all, it reminds me of Arizona. I have this weird attachment to this place because it reminds me of home. And I don't know guys, just just the, the, the pureness and the remoteness up here. Who knew this would be Afghanistan? This is like a peace haven. This is like as safe as safe could get up here. And I'm just really enjoying the time here. I'm also out of breath walking. As I told you, we're 3,000 meters, 10,000 feet high. In elevation so it is not that easy to walk uphill up here but man this place is amazing all right everyone that is the story of Bamiyan I hope you enjoyed hearing about it it was a pleasure to spend the last three days here and tell this story and if you guys notice this is the longest video I've ever made in my life and uh, I'm trying new things I think in my future I want to do more longer form documentary style storytelling so I would love to get your feedback if you think it was great uh, please let me know in the comments below if you think it should be shorter uh, let me know in the comments below I just think there's so much opportunity to tell uh, these stories deeper because there's just so much beauty out here um, so guys that's it for me if you want to follow my trip live on Instagram is the best place uh, at Drubinsky is where you can find me there and I have a lot more exploring to do in Afghanistan uh, starting tomorrow I'm heading to some new places and I'm super excited so thank you guys so much for tuning in it means the world to me and have a great day cheers from Bamiyan and the big Buddha statue So many people are going to watch this video who are from different countries. What do you want to tell them about Afghanistan? Uh, for all those people that uh, watch this video, I uh, recommend uh, for them that uh, uh, Afghanistan uh, is a good place. Uh, maybe just uh, sometime in Kabul or some places are insecure, but we have many uh, places there is security and there uh, for example like Bamiyan uh, here is Bamiyan is uh, a secure place and uh, if you came here you will uh, surely enjoy from Bamiyan and I recommend you and suggest you to uh, come here and watch Bamiyan with its uh, beautiful uh, places This is the cutest kid in all of Afghanistan. <laughs> I'm pretty sure of that. My name is Muhammad. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Are you from Bamiyan? No, I'm from uh, Kur province. Yeah. And live in Kur. Yeah. Is this your first time? I travel uh, in the Bamiyan. First time in Bamiyan? Yes. You like? Mm, I like Bamiyan. Bamiyan is a very nice city. Are you from Bamiyan? Yeah. No, Kur. I'm from Kur. 
Ah. You from Kur? And you up you from Kur? Oh. Yeah. I like Afghanistan. Uh, it's a beautiful country. Okay. okay. Afghanistan is a very nice country. Afghanistan is a beautiful uh, whole province. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you for having me here. Thank you so yeah. much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet nice you too. Nice to meet you. Bye bye. This is the old bazaar right here, standing right in front of the Buddha. And uh, it was all destroyed. Super sad. It would be so amazing if this bazaar was still functioning because it's right in front of the mountain where the Buddhas are. But sadly, it's all destroyed. Look at this. See how destroyed it was. It breaks my heart to see destruction like this from something that was so beautifully constructed. How does it make you feel that the Taliban destroyed the beauty of this part of Afghanistan? Oh, it's sad, man. It's sad. It's horrible. You can imagine how sad it is, man. Like all these bazaar and shops in the fire, like the Buddha exploding, like it's crazy. And the people all leaving their houses. Can you imagine leaving in the mountains, like in the snows for weeks and weeks? Like very difficult to find food and drink water and stuff. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and ring that little bell so you can get notified on all my upcoming videos as I take you to every single country in the world.